But today we're in 2 Timothy chapter 2. We're going to be looking at verses 20 through 26 as we continue our verse by verse study here in 2 Timothy. And what we'll be looking at is the subject of becoming vessels of honor. That's what Paul speaks about in this passage. And so let's begin reading together here in 2 Timothy chapter 2 at verse 20. I'll read to verse 26 and we'll get into our study. 2 Timothy chapter 2 beginning at verse 20. Paul writes, In a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter... He will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Flee also youthful lusts, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord with a pure heart. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. So Paul here in this passage begins to share with us how we can become vessels who are honorable in the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we begin, let me give you a brief introduction, just a couple of thoughts as we introduce this section by first pointing out verse 20. Uh, how he says, in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but wood and clay, some for honor, some for dishonor. First, we have to ask ourselves, when we study the Bible, what is he speaking about here? What is he referring to when he speaks about a great house? Because there are a variety of ways to look at that, but let me tell you what I believe is uh, scripturally solid and is the, uh, the point that he's making, and that is, when he speaks of a great house, he's speaking of the church. Now, how would we know that? Well, we know that because in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, Paul used the same metaphor in reference to the church. He said in 1 Timothy 3, 15, if I tarry long, that you may know how you ought to behave yourself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. And so the house that he's referring to is the house of God. The great house that he's speaking of is the church itself and how great and marvelous it is in the hands of the Lord. So he's speaking concerning the church, this great house. But within the great house, there are vessels. Now, vessels are ordinary utensils that are used for daily duties in a house. And he speaks concerning these vessels and their value. He says, in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. And so right away, he begins to speak concerning the members of the body of Christ, those who are members of this great house called the church. He speaks of these people as vessels. Some are vessels of honor. Some are vessels for dishonor. So he's speaking of the ordinary household utensils and gives to us their value, gold, silver, wood, and clay. Now, these are ordinary kitchen utensils, but I want you to notice that they're arranged in a descending order of value. He begins with gold, but he ends with clay. So he's giving to us a picture right now of the house of God, the church, and how there are vessels within the church that are honorable and some that are useful only for dishonorable things. What he's speaking about is in the body of Christ, there are people who are gold and silver, greatly committed believers in the things of Christ. And there are others that could be classified wood and clay who are basically just there, but not progressing in the things of the Lord. And every, every time the body of Christ gathers together, you have some who are really sold out, who is serving the Lord in love with Jesus Christ. They could be called vessels of gold or vessels of silver. There are others who are born again. They're believers, but they're so distracted by the concerns and cares of this age that they're of no heavenly use whatsoever. He would refer to them as wood and clay. So gold speaks of the committed and, and silver speaks of the committed believer. They're the ones who have grabbed hold of what Jesus has taught concerning becoming a disciple. You see, in Luke's gospel, in chapter 9, verse 23, Jesus speaking said, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. So a committed disciple is one who has decided to follow the master and as, is following him sacrificially, who's committed to picking up that cross, that implement of destruction, self-death, carrying it daily, dying to themselves in order that they might gain heaven and know Christ. 
And so that's what a, a, a vessel of gold does. That's what a vessel of silver does. It's an individual who's willing to, to pay the price, who's willing to, to, to know what the cost is and, and is willing to go whatever the route is in order that he might know Christ. In Luke 14, 27, Jesus said, Anyone who doesn't carry his cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. And so a, a vessel of gold and a vessel of silver simply have taken the message of the gospel seriously and are living for Jesus Christ. They're living for Christ. They're Christians. They're, they're, they're sold out. People know that. They know what they really believe. They know who they really serve. Paul spoke of himself in this way in Philippians chapter 3, verse 8, and I think it qualifies him to be a vessel of gold. He said, I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. Paul could use himself as an example of somebody who says, I had things that at one time were to me gain that I have now recognized as being refuse or rubbish or, or trash. It's of no heavenly value. Those things I regard as being lost in order that I might have a profit of walking with God, having a relationship with him. And so a vessel of gold or a vessel of silver is a person who has a heart to be fully committed to Christ. But there are others who are, are wood and clay. They're Christians, yes, but they struggle with their faith. They struggle with their commitment to the Lord. Even amongst believers, there are some that are more sold out to Jesus than others. Even in this room right now, there are some who are saying, I really want to know the Lord, the Lord, and I really want to serve Him. And others who say, well, you know, that'll take place some other time. Some believers are genuine but it's like they enter into heaven by the skin of their teeth. They just barely enter in. They just make it. They have a genuine faith. That's true. But they never do anything to, to, to build it up. They, they really don't pray unless it's for themselves. They, they don't read the word of God unless they're in some crisis of some sort. They're, they're very, very infrequently with other Christians unless they have some kind of great need. And they never share their faith with other people unless they're put in a position where they have to. They're, they know the things to do. They simply choose not to do them. They, they don't want to do them because for them, the popularity with the world and being cool in the sight of their friends is much more important than to actually care about their friends and their eternity. I used to tell my kids when they were in high school, this is the most important time of your life and probably will be one of the more Effective times if you ever choose to be ministers to minister because you're going to have friends for four years that That you have opportunity to live for Christ in front of when when the kids are making choices to do the things that that we have tried to teach you not to do you can be an example to them and encouragement to them and 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 live for Christ before them we used to encourage them that way because we knew that the four years of high school were, were important years and yet a lot of them a lot of kids don't really see the value of that they they don't really care about eternity and and there were times when I in great frustration would tell my children you need to understand that your friends as much as you like them are going to hell you need to understand that your friends are going to hell without Jesus Christ and you don't care you don't care. And that concerns me that you wouldn't care about their eternity. Hell does exist. And without Jesus, that's where they're going. And I used to encourage them on occasion. Kids, get serious about your walk. I still do. Get serious with your walk with Jesus. Because I, I, I want to be serious in mine. And I believe that if dad's on fire, that I can ignite the family. And, and, I, and I wanted my children to be ignited for Jesus Christ. But you know what? They didn't always listen. As a matter of fact, most of the time they were busy doing the things that they wanted to do. And lost great, they lost great opportunities to minister to people they'll never see again. It's funny how in those four years you think, oh, they're going to be my friends for life. We're going to be you know, inseparable buds forever. And then you graduate, you say goodbye at graduation, and you never see them again unless you happen across them maybe uh, on, on the street or in a store or ten years later at a, at a reunion. You never see them again. And yet these were the people that they wanted to, to impress and be cool like, uh, people that disappear from their life um, the moment graduation ends. And what happens? Well, we need to make a decision. We have to decide, what am I going to be? Uh, I want to be a vessel of honor. Some may have genuine faith, but they enter into heaven smoking. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 11 through 15, and I don't mean cigarettes. I mean smoking like Wiley Coyote. 